2 billion dollars. That's how much on-chain DeFi volume that orderly network has processed across EVM blockchain and is making permissionless liquidity a smooth user experience. And backed by some of the biggest names in Web3 like Pantera, Jump Crypto, Dragonfly, and also Laser Digital, Orderly Network has really hot updates for 2024 that you need to know about. As always, do give a like to the button, and if you're new to the human machine, show some love by hitting the subscribe button as well. So first and foremost, uh, let's first introduce uh, Ran Yi. He's the co-founder of Orderly Network. How are you, Ran? Great. Happy to be here. Thanks for having me. Yeah, likewise. Uh, we have so much to cover. So yeah, thanks for having um, us on, on the show as well. So post the um, FTX crash ride right, in late 2022, there has been a trend where a lot of the liquidity uh, came out from centralized platforms and exchanges, and then onto uh, DeFi platforms, of course marking the heightened awareness around the importance of a non-custodial crypto ownership. But uh, we do know that DeFi is still not perfect. So in your opinions, um, in terms of the DeFi overall user experience, what do you think still needs to be improved, both for individuals as well as institutions? Yeah, uh, I think there's uh, quite a bit of improvements um, that's needed. We still have a long way to go. A few key things are, one is user onboarding, user experience. Um, from everything with, you know, at the wallet level, when users have to uh, memor uh, jot down the, uh, the C phrases to um, switching between chains on MetaMask, um, that's all kind of friction for users, especially new users. And once they are into, uh, in the DeFi realm, uh, I mean, there's a lot of UX uh, improvement that's needed. Uh, I think UX and DeFi is generally pretty clunky. The the, um, the experience is not as smooth as CeFi. Um, users have to deal with various chains. They have to deal with wrapped assets, which uh, there's there's many. Um, there's uh, extra costs uh, in terms of gas. There's um, latency issues, so trading speed. There's all types of issues that um, DeFi has, which CeFi currently um, doesn't have. Um, so there's a lot of issues that uh, we need to solve before. I mean, the, the end goal is to have DeFi have the same, if not better user experience uh, as CeFi in order to get uh, more adoption uh, for DeFi. Yeah, I mean, uh, you named it right. And I think that's why uh, people like you guys are really building the infrastructure and being able to support the uh, dApps, right? That can really make that happen. So let's talk about your track record. You guys been, have been here for a while. Um, getting $2 billion in total trading volume is cer certainly not an easy feat. So yeah, can you talk more about you know, what kind of successes led you to this uh, trading volume? And yeah, how did you guys become and grow large in the DeFi ecosystem? Right. So uh, the whole vision behind Orderly is that um, we want to be the permissionless liquidity layer for Web3 trading. Um, so you know, permissionless is one thing. That's what we're striving to uh, towards so permissionless listings, um, uh, permissionless uh, integrations on top. Uh, so just imagine orderly as like the Web three CME, where there's hundreds of brokers on top, but they're all routing to the same liquidity, and that's where the assets and the liquidity sits. Uh, so uh, that's where we're building essentially kind of the Web three CME as we're um, as we're focused on perpetuals at the moment. Um, so. Orderly is shared liquidity between blockchains. You know, right now liquidity is fragmented. That's another big issue with DeFi. Um, you know, Uniswap has a different product on Arbitrum versus Polygon. It's not connected. Uh, many apps are kind of like that. And then there's um, less of an app that's truly omni-chain in that you can access it from whichever chain that you sit. It's the same product no matter which chain you're on. And the liquidity is shared, so that's one thing that we try to um, resolve. So currently on EVM, Orderly is live on Optimism and Opt Optimism and Arbitrum, uh, as well as as well as Polygon, and users can actually deposit from one chain and withdraw from the other, right? So that's uh, again one of the UX issues. And then the bridging is abstracted away from the user in a term that we call um, chain abstraction. So so these are some of the UX improvements that we've targeted. Um, in order to provide the infrastructure that the apps need to be um, to integrate, so orderly isn't retail facing ourselves, but we um, 
we promote and we incentivize builders on top to target their specific TAs. So we believe that in the future of trading, even in CFI, um, and very much similar to Tradfight, there's going to be different products and UXs that target different TAs, like kind of like the Robinhood for retail, the interactive brokers for professional traders, and you know, like the Nomura securities for institutional traders. And they all have different look and feel, product features, things that their users care about, uh, and, and it's different, right? But they all, con again, connect to the same liquidity pools. And that's what we're trying to enable. Uh, and we enable um, products on top of Orderly to do this and to cater to their specific TA and incentivize that and help them do this. Um, and I think that's, you know, that's one of the key reasons that we've grown in volumes is because of our partners. So there's two brokers currently on top of um, EVM. One is WuFi, which is, uh, you know, the WuFi, WuFi has a uh, multi-dimensional DApp and their, um, their order book, Perp's order book is on top of Orderly. And the other one is LogX. LogX is a perpetual aggregator that's on a bunch of different chains. And, you know, you can access Orderly through LogX on Arbitrum and Optimism. Uh, the other reasons are that you know we have a bunch of assets, uh, 14 assets. It's actually going to be 18 as of today, uh, listed uh, perpetuals, and with some of the world class market makers providing liquidity for those perps. Uh, and okay. that's uh, you know the liquidity is also driving um, user interactions with orderly. And um, you know final thing is it feels like a centralized exchange, right? It's decentralized, but uh, you know there's gasless trading, uh, everything's fast, latency is low, so traders like it. You know, so, you know, traders are after liquidity, they're after UX, they're after speed and low cost, right? And they can find that yeah. uh, at an orderly powered uh, DEX. Yeah, I think uh, everything what you said are like real problems that people have been uh, trying to improve because in Web3, there's a lot of cool features, right? But do people really need it? Not really. But yeah, I think um, even a lot of my friends that are entering in crypto, uh, they just want to trade like USDC or like meme coins. And then suddenly they face the issue of, okay, what is this bridge? Uh, what is like USDC .e or like, you know, all kinds of chains. So I think that's why a lot of these people tend to go to central exchanges where they just trade the coin and then they can withdraw, right, on any blockchain. So I think that's a very uh, good point to make. Um, you mentioned uh, examples like uh, WuFi and also LogX. Uh, can we dive more into these? So for example, the WuFi, right? Um, how is it actually making the user experience uh, more like a centralized exchange type of view? Right. So Orderly has an Orderly SDK that we're constantly refining, and that allows an, inter an integration, so a builder, to build their own uh, perps decks on top within a week. Right. So oh, anyone, one yeah, That's one fast. week. Yeah. Yeah. We try to make it as fast as possible, and anyone uh, can do this, any builder. So um, our target TA, um, our target partners are those who want to build their own perpetuals order book, right? Or need perpetuals liquidity. We're starting off with perpetuals. Uh, later, you may see spot and, and others. Um, and, you know, I think the world is shifting in the, in, in the direction where there's going to be super apps on top of, you know, in DeFi, where consumers are probably too lazy to go to too many apps, kind, kind of where, uh, kind of what PancakeSwap is doing in, in the yeah. BNB ecosystem. They're the dominant player with the majority market share. Um, I think it starts off as super apps in each ecosystem as the chains are still pretty segregated. And then as chain interoperability increases, there's going to be multi-chain or omni-chain super apps that will exist. Kind of like what Binance is today, as they have, you know, even with kind of reduced market share, they're probably still 40% of the market. Uh, I yeah. think that's going to happen for, for crypto. So then for every AMM um, that only has a spot product, I know I think they realize we realize that it's not enough. They need to have more products, right? Whether it's earn, whether it's perpetuals. And then we provide the infrastructure to power their perpetuals, right? And they can get it out very fast, provide a more complete product for their users and to uh and to monetize, right? Um so Orderly has a very uh friendly and um generous rev share program with uh, brokers on top, where a broker can essentially, can potentially get majority of the revenues, even um, trading fees as users trade with them. So they're very happy to work with us and to, you know, we're providing infrastructure and the liquidity. Uh, all they have to do is build and then route, uh, find users. Um, and they're potentially getting majority of the fees, right? So it's a good deal for them. And we even incentivize that. 
Um, and Wufi is one, one, of, one of these players. So the Wufi has like a swap uh, function, earn function, a staking for their tokens, and then for, um, and then finally perks on top of orderly. Uh, so they're trying to build essentially like a decentralized finance, right? And they're customer facing, and they're trying to build this complete product that satisfies every use that a trader or a DeFi user may have. Uh, and they're working towards a super, super DAP uh, goal. And we orderly powers the order book uh, perps part of Wufi. Uh, so it's been a great cooperation so far. I mean, even with LogX, it's a similar situation, but they're, it's more direct as they're a perpetual aggregator. So then they're aggregating anything that has liquidity. And we have uh, good liquidity and they're routing uh, to us um, you know, quite, quite a lot on, on, on Arbitrum Optimism. So it's like, you know, if I'm a user on a Wufi LogX or anything even built on top of that, um, I may not directly know that it's been directly routed to Orderly. But at the end of the day, it's, it trickles up, right? The uh, liquidity of Orderly makes it possible to get those, you know, fast trades, uh, large volumes, less switches, slippage, and so forth. Exactly, exactly. Uh, and, you know, it, usually um, our partners would write Power by Orderly, like uh, okay. on, the, on, the, on the DAP. Yeah, but, yeah, exactly. Um, we can allow for uh, this trading experience to happen. And then uh, when it comes to the you know, cross-chain aspects, so for example, let's say I'm an Arbitrum, right? And I'm trying to trade on Optimism or vice versa. Like how does the cross-chain actually work? Because there's fees on both sides, right? Of like blockchain, the bridging, and oftentimes I mean, it can get quite costly, at least with the bridging space now. So how do you guys like uh, smooth that out for the users? Eventually, everything gets abstracted away from the user, right? I mean, the onboarding, but that's that's like a wallet's job. For us, it's about chain abstraction, right? And it, it, we should just, just imagine the experience on centralized exchange, uh, let's say Binance, where you're depositing a withdrawal from any of the chains that they support with a native asset, right? Not, not some wrapped asset, ideally. I think that's kind of the end game. Um, and then you can trade, right, once you deposit. And then whichever chain you want to withdraw to, for whatever reason, you can do that as well. The native asset so that's the experience that you know we want to allow and that's already um the experience that we do allow for optimism um arbitrum so users can deposit from arbitrum they can trade the trade actually settles um on our own chain the orderly chain uh, built using op stacks and the user may withdraw the asset from let's say optimism uh and that pr process is very smooth there's very little fees um involved right uh, the trading is gasless um, there's a, there is a gas fee as they deposit and withdraw, but, you know, on these layer twos, it's, it's very, it's, it's a small cost. Uh, and so again, we're trying to enable this, uh, centralized exchange like experience, but, uh, decentralized. Got it. Yeah. I think, uh, less clicks, the better, right? For the user and of course, less fees. Uh, can you talk more about those examples when it comes to vaults? Because I know you recently released some on optimism. Yeah. So we have two types of vaults. Uh, the current ones are available are like custodian contracts, right? So for every perps exchange, uh, the user has to deposit, uh, you know, let's say it's like some centralized exchange, but we replace that with just a custodian smart contract on Arbitrum um, Optimism, where users can deposit into the contract, you know, it's fully on chain. Uh, then once the user deposits, that information gets passed to our own chain, the orderly chain on top of OP, using OP stacks. Uh, the information is passed via layer zero, their cross-chain messaging service. Um, and it gets stored on our own chain. So imagine our chain is, is just a ledger. We call it like a settlement layer. So all the DEX is on top of orderly, all the deposit withdrawal information gets transferred uh, from layer zero to our own chain. And then the user can start trading. Once they start trading, you know, the balance information, the trades information, it gets packaged um, block by block into our own chain as well. So just imagine um, our chain as like a giant ledger. Um, so like a settlement layer that settles and stores all the trades and balances of users from all the DEXs on top. So like a clearinghouse, basically. Uh, that's what you call it in, in, in TradFi. Um, and um, I mean, that's, that's kind of the, uh, the process. So, so then uh, the user can deposit uh, from any of the chains that, that they want to and trade and all, everything uh, gets settled on chain and then they can withdraw from whichever chain that they want. That's kind of the first vault, right? It's just the custodian. Uh, smart contract it behaves like a custodian the second vault that is coming that will allow basically anyone to be able to uh, provide liquidity passive liquidity 
to for the order of the order book and earn yields from providing liquidity, uh, and as well as allow users to kind of um, allocate capital to different types of on-chain strategies on Orderly that they can, again, earn yield from. And this can happen from any chain that Orderly is on. So there's two types of vaults. Um, one is custodian. The other one is like a, like a yield-generating vault, which is coming. Got it. Yeah, I think that's going to be uh, really useful because um, for myself, let's say I do DeFi, I look at these vaults. The first thing I need to think about is which chain do I choose to insert my vault with? And if I want to move to another one, I have to manually take it out and come in. And that's quite a hassle, right? Because you just want to be like, you know, let it sit there and earn yields while you sleep. So I think that's going to be a game changer because uh, yields do change all the time across different chains. So if you don't automate it, yeah, it's going to be a nightmare. And so I'm glad you guys are doing that with the new balls. Yep. And then um, I know we've been talking about updates, but 2024 has been really bullish so far. A Bitcoin hash rate all-time high, you know, hitting like 52K for the first time like in years, right? I think everyone's, you know, more excited, Bitcoin having. So I'm sure the same is for uh, Orderly Network. You guys also do have more updates. So what can we expect in terms of like new partnerships, uh, new tech integrations or other features that we can get excited? Yeah, there's a lot coming. Um, I mean, we have a team of uh, great people, uh, 45 people around the world, and we're constantly building and shipping. You know, our daily volumes have are ranging between 100 to 150 million ish per day. And growing, uh, we're you know we're aiming high for uh, about a billion a day uh, by this year, uh, just on the perps. Um, we have many exciting product features coming online. Kind of one of them is the strategy vaults that I just described. Uh, we're going to onboard uh, more chains, right? So so starting with the EVM chains, we're on three now. We're going to onboard onto more. I mean the chains that are popular and have DeFi users. Um, you can imagine will will be on. Uh, and even some of the non-EVM chains are ones that we're, I mean, we're already on near, um, but you can imagine the, the non-EVM chains that has a lot of users, uh, we're going to try to be on there as well. And, and it'll all be one product, right? So it's just kind of like different vaults on those chains and they're connecting to our uh, central, our, our matching, our settlement layer, the orderly chain via bridges and cross-chain messaging services. Um, and the liquidity is all shared. So users do not have to segregate liquidity or they have to kind of pick a chain to be on. It'll all be the, the same liquidity, um, like the same experience. And, and these chains are kind of, uh, you can deposit it from one chain and withdraw from the other, whatever, whatever you want, right? Just, so, so again, it's like a centralized change um, mm -hmm. that we are, we are trying to enable um, that experience over. Um, so that's, that's pretty exciting. We're going to work with, uh, different liquidity provision protocols, beef up the liquidity for orderly. We actually announced a partnership already with Elixir, right? That they are um, a market making protocol where their users can provide passive liquidity and they, they have an algorithm that places it as maker orders on, on DEXs and you know, working with them. So that's going to uh, come out pretty soon as well. And, and we have a bunch of other product features that's, that's on the roadmap, like different order types. Um, Permissionless listings. I mean, these are these are some of the things that uh, that, that we'll work on, and it's uh, it's it's very exciting. Oh, and in ter in terms of you know, there's only two brokers currently, right? As I mentioned, Wufi Pro and LogX on EVM. You can anticipate another eight to ten in the coming month Whoa. or two um, that are going that are going to go live, and these are and some of them are some of the big big names that that you've heard of in DeFi. So uh, that's very exciting. We're anticipating that there's going to be a lot of campaigns, um, partnerships announcements, and uh, and a lot of a lot of fun, right? With all types of guys on top of orderly uh, servicing their users, and you know we're kind of enabling them to make their products more complete, attract more users, retain, um, have higher retention for their existing users, and yeah. uh, and it will be a vibrant uh, ecosystem and community. Yeah, I really hope so because uh, especially during both seasons, we see um, seasons of outcoins, right? Also, capital rotation and like all kinds of new narratives coming up, like at breakneck speed. So, I think if you can support you know, all these developers to utilize their creative ideas and really provide that liquidity, the very, very foundation, right, which is so critical. I mean, uh, yeah, it's just going to be crazy um, bull market this year. Yeah, exactly. And you mentioned Bitcoin ecosystem. I mean, that's one thing I'm pretty bullish on. Um, just the sheer mass of 
Bitcoin community and their assets and um, kind of idle assets. And now it's kind of getting, uh, you know, there's Bitcoin layer twos popping up left and right. Um, there's some of the old layer twos and a lot of new ones that, you know, we're, we're in talks with, with some of them and we want to service the Bitcoin community as well. Again, so it's like the Binance, the, the decentralized Binance um, image again, right? Where mm-hmm. you can trade in and out of native Bitcoin instead of some wrapped asset. You can use native Bitcoin as collateral for perps. So that's kind of the, kind of the end game that we see for, for DEXs. Yeah, I'm glad you mentioned that because uh, there's been a lot of ongoing discussions about you know, Bitcoin layer twos. Uh, how do we unlock the almost $1 trillion in uh, native BTC that's sitting there? Because a lot of these BTC holders, um, they understand that the only way to keep it truly safe is just hold it in a native. Wrapping is cool, but it's costly and there's a lot of custodian or a centralization issues. So do you think um, 2024 will be the year of like Bitcoin L2s where we actually kind of see activity and the security still being relatively reasonable? Yeah, I think it's one step at a time. Um, I, like, I think it'll move step by step. We're not going to get to like an end game where it's super secure Bitcoin layer two because I mean it's just the Bitcoin blockchain just lacks that functionality that like smart contracts and such. And many players are tackling uh, this this issue like from old, older ones like Stacks to newer ones uh, like, like Merlin. Um, these guys. So we're uh, we're trying to find the, the best partners to work with on this, right? Um, where they have the infra that enables this, and it'll be uh, one step at a time. Uh, but I think eventually someone will find the right balance between security, usability, uh, costs, um, you know, to satisfy the demand of all these people. I mean, that's including the DeFi community and the Bitcoin community to be able to just utilize their Bitcoin in a safe way to generate yields or to trade or to use as collateral. Um, I think it's going to happen. Um, this year, I think it's actually quite likely that something happens, but it might not be the end game. Um, but I think there's enough attention now, especially with Ordinals, to these alternative native assets and uh, developers that are building the infrastructure. I think it's going to happen where there's going to be an uplift, uh, a rise in the Bitcoin DeFi ecosystem. And it's, it's going to, Someone's going to figure it out, the infrastructure, and you know, we're there to solve the trading, the trading piece. Well, thank you so much, Ren. Um, that was a very good overview. Uh, very bullish. Of course, uh, devil's in the details. And uh, yeah, just please continue to update the community and, and grow the uh, TVL and also volumes to $3 billion, $4 billion. Amazing. Thank you. All right. Have a nice one, Ren. You too. Thank you. Bye.